Ahoy there folks, I'm Captain Benzie and welcome back to another video for EVE Online. If you enjoy this content and want to see more of it, subscribe to the channel and consider hitting like and dropping a comment down below as both of these things teach YouTube to promote my content to more viewers. If you do want to support this channel, consider heading across to my Patreon page or dropping a donation in my PayPal tip jar. Now, in today's video, I want to talk about something a little bit unusual. That is to say, critical thinking in EVE Online. Now, the reason I say this is unusual is because I'm a YouTuber, and I think a lot of people come to my channel, and they come to a lot of gaming YouTube channels, and expect me to be some kind of mad expert on everything. Therefore, you just copy the fit, you go out and do what I say, and you'll have fun, right? Well, no, that's not how EVE Online works, and critical thinking is vital to the enjoyment of this game. There are a couple of different aspects of this that I want to cover in this video, so I think it is best that we just jump straight in. Now, where did this concept come from? Well, I was talking to a guy in my YouTube comment section. If you do drop a comment on YouTube, I do try to respond to every single one of them. Don't always get the chance, but I'll try to do my best. And he was talking about how he had upgraded from the Thrasher to the Thrasher Fleet issue based on my video that I did talking about Alpha Strike damage. Now, what I wanted to sort of say to this response is, I'm glad that you're enjoying a different ship and you're having fun flying what you enjoy, but actually the Thrasher fleet issue is not the ship that you want to be flying for that. And here's the point. So if we go into the standard Thrasher and we open up a simulation screen on this and have a look just straight off at the high slots here. Now I'm going to go down to projectile turrets and we are going to have a look at artillery, small artillery, and let's just load in a load of 280 mil howitzer artilleries. Now you'll notice that the Thrasher itself has seven high slots. This means we can actually get a good amount of damage out of this, right? If we then add in some ammunition just to get some good old DPS numbers out of this, we'll put Quake in here just for the sake of it, you'll see that we're getting 212.3 DPS and an alpha of 1637. So, okay, cool. We have the understanding of what the Thrasher can do. Again, just for mental note, 212 DPS, 1637 alpha. Now, what if we go into the Thrasher fleet issue and we do exactly the same thing? So again, we're going to go into the high slots. We are going to fit those same howitzer artillery twos. And you'll notice that this time the Thrasher fleet issue only has six high slots, six turret slots at least, compared to the, fleet, uh, the standard Thrasher's seven. Now, if we drop in that same Quake ammunition, you'll see that our DPS is indeed higher, 242.6 DPS. But the alpha damage is actually lower, 1,403 compared to the 1,632, I think it was, from the standard Thrasher. Now, you would maybe perhaps be forgiven for having a look at the, the ship tree here and seeing that the Thrasher is a Tech 1 destroyer, and then you've got the Navy issue, which is much more expensive, so it must be a better ship, right? That's what I want to talk about. No, not necessarily. If we're looking at the Thrasher, you'll see it's got a 5% bonus to small projectile turret damage and a 10% bonus to tracking speed along with the optimal range bonuses. If we look at the fleet issue by comparison, yes, it's got that same 5% damage. It's also got a 5% rate of fire and it then gets that same 50% to range, but also with fall off. So we get slightly better range out of the fleet issue and we get better overall DPS because we're also getting that rate of fire bonus, right? That is clearly a good thing. You can see it increases DPS. But the point I want to get at here is that when I was doing that video, I was talking about alpha damage and the Thrasher fleet issue actually has lower overall alpha. This means that the Thrasher fleet issue isn't a direct upgrade over the standard Thrasher. The fact that the Thrasher has seven turret hard points compared to the fleet issue six means that they actually end up doing different things. And you might say, well, what does the alpha damage actually matter, Benzie? Surely if I'm getting higher DPS, that's the winning condition, right? Well, no, not necessarily, because if an alpha strike can take out a ship in one shot, then the fact that you can fire those shots faster simply doesn't matter. And if you have to fire two shots at something, not only does that take longer to kill it than just the one shot would, it also means that you're using more ammunition. 
On top of this, the Thrasher fleet issue is straight up a more expensive hull. You're spending more on a ship and more on ammunition to actually be slightly slower than the Thrasher. In specific circumstances, and this is very sort of theory crafty, I know there are going to be some people watching this going, yeah, but how often do you kill something in one hit? The simple point is, until that rate of fire bonus actually significantly increases your clear time on something, it's not really worth the additional cost of the ship. Essentially, if you're aiming to kill things in one shot, the Thrasher fleet issue is not as good as the Thrasher, and it's actually going to be more expensive, cost you more in ammunition, and be a worse option. This means that for me, if I was using an autocannon Thrasher, and I'm trying to take out, say, bigger targets, something that I know I'm going to need to hit repeatedly, then yeah, the, th the Thrasher fleet issue is going to work better, and that rate of fire bonus is more favourable towards autocannons that have a faster rate of fire anyway, than perhaps artillery that are designed to be slow, heavy hitters. Ultimately, this is a really verbose way of me saying, Look at the actual stats of the ship that you are flying and think about what it is you want to do. Higher tech doesn't mean better. And this is a trap that I certainly fell into myself early on in my life as an EVE Online pilot. I would simply want to upgrade to the next biggest thing, and that in itself can be a big mental problem. Like if you are sitting there looking, for example, at the Stabber line. Having a Stabber, it's a really cool cruiser, but surely the Stabber fleet issue must be better, and the Vagabond even more so. Well, yeah, I love the Vagabond to pieces. It's probably my favourite ship in EVE Online right now, but there are definitely situations where I would rather undock a Stabber or even a Stabber fleet issue than the, uh, than the Vagabond. They're a lot cheaper for starters. If I'm going to go on a PvP roam, then does it really matter if I'm flying something like a Vagabond? If I'm in a fleet of ships, then the chances of me being destroyed are fairly high because we're going after big targets. Going for something like a Stabber, it's a lot less cost if I lose it than the Vagabond is, and the actual damage output, etc., isn't all that much lower. And yeah, the Vagabond has more in the way of survivability and tank, but if we've got logistics cruisers in the fleet, does that really matter all that much? There are pros and cons either way is kind of what I'm getting at here. And this does work in industry as well. It's very easy to head across to the ore tree and say, well, I just want to go mining or gas huffing. So using gas huffing, because it's an example I understand a bit better, obviously the venture has certain bonuses. Roll bonus, you get 100% bonus to the gas cloud scoop yield and a 5% reduction, or 25% of full training, to gas cloud scoop duration. So you've got a 25% reduction in duration, and a 100% bonus to the yield. Then we can look at something like the prospect, and here again we have a 25% bonus to gas cloud scoop duration, so same as we saw before. We've also got a 100% reduction, uh, sorry, 100% bonus to the gas cloud scoop yield. That's exactly the same as the Venture. Like, it, the difference between the Venture and the Prospect in terms of gas cloud harvesting is zero. They are exactly the same ship. You put two gas cloud scoops on a Prospect or two gas cloud scoops on a Venture, you're getting the same amount of gas. The only thing that's going to matter is things like ore hold or in the fact that the Prospect then has those cloaking device um, abilities as well. Does it matter? If you're not using the cloaking device, if you don't need the cloaking device, then the Venture is the same ship, but a lot cheaper. And in some cases, that's going to be far superior for what you actually want. You may find that other ships, you have a look at, for example, a Tengu compared to a Cerberus, or a Loki compared to a Vagabond, and it's like, well, the Loki's a Tech 3, right? Surely that's going to be better than the Vagabond. And in certain situations, yes, it is. In other situations, no, it's not. If you've watched my Loki video, you'll see it's got an aligned time of 10 seconds. Now, the way I fly that ship and the situation that I fly that ship is with other people around me and with manual piloting, so I can kind of keep aligned whilst I'm descanning or at least partially aligned and flying towards something that I can warp to. If I were in a much more solo position, however, the faster align time of the Vagabond is going to allow me a quicker and safer getaway than the Loki would. So the Loki works really well when I'm being supported by other people in my corporation. The Vagabond works better if I'm going to be going a bit more risky and doing things on my own. 
And it's these kind of concepts I want to talk about. Because again, there have been videos I've put out in the past where I've been talking about the difference between, say, the Cheetah, the Helios, the Buzzard, and the Anathema. And people will tell me that, oh, you're just biased for one of these or another. No, I'm not. I prefer the Cheetah personally because I like its slot layout and I like its align times and all of the little things like that. But absolutely, the Helios might be the better option for you. The Anathema might be the better option. The Buzzard might be the better option. I talked about this in that video by saying the fact that the Buzzard has a lot more mid-slots available to it means that essentially you can fit those with more of the uh, like the range-finding arrays, that kind of thing, the different scan arrays. So if you're still training up all of your scanning skills, the Buzzard is far superior to something like the Anathema or the Cheetah because you can plug those mid-slots with additional modules that are going to compensate for the lower skills. The drawback of this is that the Buzzard has very few low slots and therefore you're not going to be able to fit for a line time the same way you would on something like a Cheetah or an Anathema. You can get much faster align times on those ships by fitting more inertial stabilizers into the low slots. Essentially, Hopefully these random rambling points here are showcasing to you that what you need to do when you watch my content is not just take what I say for granted. I am showing you what I'm enjoying. My YouTube channel is essentially to use the words of Otto Mechanic. Ahoy there folks, I'm Captain Benzi. I'm having fun. Here's how you can too. It's not a gospel. It's not something that you follow word for word. And I actually argue that religion is something that you shouldn't follow word for word. Either you should find ways to apply it to your life. The same is true for EVE Online. Look at the different ships. Find your fun. I could sit there and say... I didn't really enjoy flying the eagle in my C3 ratting video when I did all of the different uh, the all the different hacks and I went through like the vagabond and the munin the eagle the Deimos, the cerberus the sacrilege yeah I've got my opinions on which ones I think are better but if you absolutely love the look of the eagle for example because it's a mower hull and you really like that maybe you enjoy medium hybrids more than you enjoy missiles I would say that yeah the cerberus is better than the eagle for C3 ratting. But you might say, well, actually, I find the eagle more fun. And that's absolutely fine. There's also the simple fact that if I'm being completely honest, I'm one person. When I did this particular series, for example, I looked at the Zealot and I said that the Zealot had a lot of firepower to it, but it really struggled to tank some of those C3 anomalies. Whereas... I've since sat down with some people on Discord who have looked at the seller and gone, actually, we can fit it to accommodate for that. And there are things that you didn't think about in your video that you could have done that do patch through that. And that's why, like when I did the Mumba video for the Gurustus Pirates, I did a video on that where I did one fit and it worked pretty well until I lost the ship. Then I came back and I tried something different and that worked even better. Eve Online is about trying things, right? Look at the tools in front of you and think about what you can do with that. Don't just come to me and be like, oh, well, this guy says that this is the best thing, therefore that's what I should do. No, I'm just one person. I may not have counted for everything. Like when I first looked at the Panther moving across to this ship tree here for the Mimitar, when I first had a look at the Panther, I tried to fit it for combat and it just didn't work. I darn near lost the thing on the very first sight I did and I kind of gave up on it for a while. Then I came back to it recently and tried it with a passive tank fit and it really worked. Is it a good option? No, it's ridiculously expensive and other stuff does it faster. But if you really like the Panther, absolutely you can make it work. Yeah, there are plenty of ships out here that are going to be better or worse at certain roles. Taking out the Angel Cartel ships and going, actually, you can fly this in PvE. I had so many really angry people saying, oh yeah, the first thing I would do when I look at a Mechabal or a Kisrael, a clearly PvP ship, is think, how can I fit that for PvE? Yeah, good. I'm, I'm glad that's not your thought process because you're a different player. You have different concepts of what you find fun in this game. For me, I'm not a big PvP player. I'm trying to get into it more and more. But when I see a cool new ship that I want to fly, I want to see if I can move it into the environment that I enjoy playing. So I look at the bonuses and I consider how I can fit a ship based on that. And my fun in the game is trying to put different ships into really stupid situations. Is the Kisrael good for PvE? Yeah, it works. But you can do it better with cheaper ships if you skill into certain things. 
And so if you're the person who's looking for min-maxing and sort of to make things absolutely perfect, yeah, there's all kinds of things you can do. But if you really just want to have some fun with the kids reel, then I've got a video that will show you how to do that. That's kind of the concept of what I'm doing here on YouTube. I'm not necessarily saying that the ships that I fly are the best at the job. They're not, and I'm constantly finding new, exciting things. Like, I've really struggled with the Galente ships in C3 Ratting. When it came to running the heavy assault cruisers, for example, yeah, the Deimos was a brilliant ship that did really well. It really astonished me. I could not get the Ishtar working at all, but I've been playing with fits on that recently because I reckon it might work. Curiously enough, whereas the Ishtar struggles with C3s, in my experiences, the Vex and Navy issue does it really, really easily. That was a recent video for me as well. So there you can clearly see that for the purposes of C3 ratting, the significantly cheaper Vex and Navy issue actually outshines the Ishtar because it has different bonuses. Don't be fooled by the fact that it's essentially a Vexa hull. Yeah, the Ishtar looks like a Vexa, but if you read those bonuses, they're very different. As an example, the Vexa Navy issue gets a really nice bonus there to medium hybrid turret damage and tracking speed. You actually want to put medium hybrid turrets in those high slots in order to get those bonuses effective. Whereas for the Ishtar, it doesn't have any bonuses at all to its high slots. There is no medium projectile bonuses here. There's no project uh, medium hybrid bonuses here. There's no hybrid bonuses here. There's no bonus to a single high slot turret or launcher which makes it a very different ship. And that means that the Ishtar struggles to hold aggro off the drones. The Vexa Navy issue has its own weaponry and therefore is registering as a threat to the enemies that you're shooting. Whereas the Ishtar just isn't. Even if you fit it with medium hybrids, they're not doing enough damage for the enemies to actually consider the Ishtar the bigger threat. Therefore, they go for the drones. Do you see how that is a big difference? Yeah, they may be very similar looking ships. They may have a surface level. You can sit there and go, oh, well, they're both, you know, drone boats, right? The Ishtar, it's more expensive. It's still a drone boat, but it also gets all these cool bonuses to things like operation range and sentry drones. It can even fit assault damage controls. It must be better, right? No, not necessarily. You need to actually look at the ships that you're flying, the ships that you want to fly, and consider what those ships do. Yes, if you want to fly a particular ship, I applaud you for trying to find ways to make it work. That's my kind of fun as well. But don't come to my videos and just expect that what I'm doing is the best way. And certainly don't assume that, oh, because this ship's further up the tech tree, it must be better than the ones below it. Because simply put, the Ishtar is the perfect example for this. I cannot get the Ishtar to work in C3 ratting, whereas the considerably cheaper VNI does a wonderful job of it. Does that make sense? I hope I've got my point across here. Yes, this video is a little bit of rambly stream of consciousness thought, but it's something that's been really bothering me recently in my comment section, that a lot of folks have come in and kind of gone, oh, I'm just going to copy this fit and run it, and oh, it's, it's not as good as the other thing I was doing. Yeah, because it's me having fun in a very specific way. Or someone saying, oh, you're an idiot for flying a panther. Your fit's absolutely shit, like a three-year-old could do better. Genuinely a comment I had on that video, by the way. To which my response was, and yet it works. Like, yeah, it might be a shit fit, but it does the job, right? I'm not claiming to be the best EVE Online player. I will be the first person to admit I'm not. PvP alone I suck at. Industry just melts my brain in, in awful, awful ways. Industry confuses the heck out of me. Like when someone was talking about, like one of my real life friends was talking about uh, like P4, like Planetary 4 products or something like that. I don't even know. I'm just like, I don't even know what that is. I don't even know what that is. I'm just having fun. I'm showcasing stuff that I'm enjoying in EVE and hopefully that will lead you to find something that you enjoy in EVE as well. But don't just take my word for it. Try things. If you look at my fit and think, oh, actually I could improve this. Let me know. Let me know. The thing that annoys me absolutely most about those, oh my god, your fit is so shit, is that they never suggest an improvement. It's just some dickhead sitting on the sidelines going, oh, yeah, this could be better, with no actual feedback, which just leads me to think that it's some poor keyboard warrior who's got nothing better to do with their life. They feel so sad about whatever it is that they're doing that they just need to tear other people down. And to those people, I say, I, I'm really sorry. 
I'm sorry that your life's in that situation. If I can make it better somehow, let me know. I would love to, you know, help you out and see what I can do to make your life better. And if you honestly think that my content is absolutely terrible, I encourage you to make your own. Genuinely, not as some kind of, oh my God, you do better than. Genuinely. The, the health of a game like EVE Online is absolutely measurable. I've said this for years. The health of any video game is measurable by the amount of people making content for it. You look at a game like, for example, Call of Duty or Fortnite, there are thousands upon thousands upon thousands of quality content creators. That shows that the game is doing really well. The more content creators we have, the more the community grows and expands and we can help new players get involved. We can share our fun with more people. That's awesome. Get out there. Do it. If you've got some ideas of what you think would be fun, let me know. I'm always open for ideas. And to Naku, thank you ever so much for your fits recently. I am working on those. For the rest of you, if you're not sure what I'm talking about, that's the gentleman who uh, taught me how to fit the Vexa Navy issue for C3 Ratting. We've also got fits for the Augura Navy issue, the Stabber Fleet issue, um, a Scythe Fleet issue, Caracal Navy issue, this kind of stuff. I'm just going to be having so much fun trying those out. Are they going to be the best fits in the world? I don't know. We'll see. But when I show those in a video, hopefully you can look at that and think not just, oh my God, this works, let me copy paste it. But look at it and think, why does it work? How can I adjust this to fit my playstyle and my needs? And if this isn't the best thing in the world, it might still be fun for me. That's awesome. I'm really, really glad when people share the kind of fun they're having in the game. Anyway, folks, that is my ramble over. Just a quick stream of conscious video while I'm currently working on the Eve Wharf and New Eden board game review. That is taking all of my time these days, but I still wanted to have something to talk about today for this video. So hopefully you've enjoyed this. Let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comment section down below. Otherwise, thanks for watching. Happy sailing and see you in New Eden.